Are you afraid that you're hurting your cloud career without even realizing it? Over the past 10 years as a senior engineer at Amazon, I've made my fair share of mistakes. These mistakes have impacted both my career growth and my personal development. But the thing is, they are completely avoidable if you know about them in advance. And that's what this video is about. It's kind of a career retrospective to talk about the top four cloud career mistakes that I wish I avoided. So let's just get right into it. Now, when I first started learning AWS and cloud concepts in general, I started with two specific AWS services, DynamoDB and S3. And I knew that my team used these services quite a bit. And in order to be an effective contributor, I need to understand them well, what they did, why they were important so that I can pull my own weight during my implementation tasks and general conversations. Now, the problem with this is that although I was able to learn in general what these services did and how they worked, I didn't really understand all the different AWS services that existed out there and why one would be a better choice over the other. In retrospect, I kind of think that this hamstrung my career development because I wasn't really able to effectively contribute to design discussions or architecture discussions when we were talking about very specific problems, in particular about which service to use and why one was a better choice over the other. Now, looking back on things, I think a much better way of doing this would be to not start with these specific AWS services, but to look at AWS as kind of this broader picture and look at it historically. How did things used to work in the past with infrastructure on premise and what problem does AWS solve for? And further, I would walk through a specific example that talks about the broad variety of AWS services, the categories, and how they're all connected. So things like compute, things like databases, things like networking, event orchestration, those kinds of things. Now, thankfully, I created a couple videos that attempted to solve this problem so that if you're in a similar boat, I'll put the videos somewhere up here so that you can take a look at them. The first one is kind of an introduction to AWS, and it goes through a practical example of a web application with a front end and a back end and also an analytics component. And I walk through all the different AWS services that exist, at least the most important ones, and how you can leverage them to solve a particular problem. And the second video is a little bit more strategic. It's a talk about how I would learn AWS today, knowing everything that I know now after 10 years of cloud experience. And in this one, I talk about kind of this approach of walking through the different categories. So starting with compute, databases, networking, and I also share with you some very useful resources in terms of videos, courses, and other things that you can look at in order to increase the speed in which you can pick things up. Looking back on things, I think if I started with this broader perspective of what AWS was and the problem that it solved for, I would have been able to have better conversations with my peers. I would have been able to design solutions better, be more aware of different options, and also articulate better why I was going with one solution over the other. All right, so moving on to the second mistake. Part of the fun thing about working with AWS is that things are constantly changing. You could check out a blog post or watch a YouTube video or a Reddit conversation that talks about a brand new service or an innovative way to solve a particular problem. And so this was kind of an issue for me when I was first getting started. I was attracted to all the brand new shiny things without really understanding whether or not it was the right decision to use that particular service or not. I kind of wanted to keep up with what was new and show that I was learning new things as opposed to keep keeping things simple and picking the right tool for the job. And I have to say, looking back on things, keeping things simple and choosing the right tool for the specific problem at hand is probably one of the most important skills that you can develop as a cloud engineer. The thing to be aware of is that AWS is constantly releasing new services all the time. But although they're releasing these new things, the fundamentals aren't really changing. There's a certain set of fundamental services that are kind of the backbone of AWS. And once you understand these foundational services, you'll realize that a lot of the new products that AWS are releasing are just wrappers or bundles of particular sets of services that do things in a particular way or make things a little bit simpler. A perfect example is something like AWS App Runner, which is a way for you to deploy your your applications much quicker. Now behind the scenes, this is just using some EC2 instances and adding a nice UI to make this a little bit simpler for you. But it's a brand new service, right? And you may get overwhelmed and think to yourself, hey, this new thing got launched, why am I not using it? So again, I would highly recommend to keep things simple when you're deciding on different infrastructure or architectural decisions and really have a cautious eye for the new AWS services that are being released and really evaluate whether or not they're useful in your particular use case. 
My next big career slash personal development mistake was how I approached solving problems. As an SDE at Amazon, there's a lot of responsibilities. There's a lot of tasks that you need to run through, and there's a lot of new things that you need to learn very, very quickly in order to be successful. And when I first started at Amazon, one of the things I found myself doing is kind of brute forcing myself through problems. I would have a particular problem I was trying to solve. I would learn a little bit about it, try one thing, see if it was working. Hey, it worked or it didn't. If it didn't work, I would change something slightly and try it a couple times until I got it right. And in retrospect, I think this was the wrong thing to do. Although I was able to finish my tasks on time and I never really got in trouble for anything, I never really felt confident in a lot of areas that you know I was making progress on from a task perspective. I didn't really feel like I had a solid handle on what was happening behind the scenes. And if someone were to ask me about, hey, Daniel, how did you solve this particular task? I'd be able to describe to them the motions that I went through, but I wasn't really able to explain why something worked and why my particular approach was the right way or the wrong way to solve the particular item at hand. And in retrospect, looking back on this, the ability to understand why you're making a particular decision and to explain it to others is a very valuable skill. Something that I wish I spent a little bit more time earlier on developing in my career. I think focusing too much on the outcome and not enough on the why is going to get you ahead in the short term, but in the longer term, you're not really going to be doing yourself any benefit. Now, some of you may say, hey, Daniel, I don't think that's realistic. I'm going to have to spend more time on a task now in order to understand the details of it. My manager is going to get pissed off at me or I'm spending too long on something. People are going to think I'm dumb. Now, I guarantee you, if you have any half decent manager, they're going to prefer you spend a little bit more time so that you have a good understanding of what you're doing and why so that you can explain it to others as opposed to just finishing a task and moving on. So that's the third mistake I wish I avoided. Don't brute force things. Make sure you understand why as you're completing tasks. Now, my fourth and final mistake. And before I say this, I just want to add a caveat. This is my personal opinion. I feel like in the beginning, I spent a little too much time flirting with certifications. I would spend some time going deep into these AWS services, so DynamoDB and S3 to start, but I was also entertaining this idea of getting my AWS certification. And although this is a really popular route for a lot of different people, Personally, I don't think certifications are a very good option if you want to build hands-on practical skills. I think a much better way to learn AWS fundamentals and to gain confidence is to build real projects, ideally projects that solve a relatable problem and combine multiple different AWS services in order to build a solution. This is something that I think a lot of people don't really realize. AWS has a lot of services and uniquely they solve very particular problems. But the true power of AWS comes through the connections between these different services. You can develop some very powerful architectures by combining different AWS services together. When you're looking at services in isolation, it's not really much of a help. But when you're using them in combination to solve a particular problem with an architecture, that's really where you're going to make a lot of progress, both in terms of your personal development and your career. I promise you that if you develop more hands-on practical skills, either developing projects projects at work or in your spare time, you're going to have a much better intuition when it comes to architecture. You're also going to be able to ask better questions to your peers and challenge them in certain ways. Why are you using this technology over the other? Did you consider this or that? These are very good questions and very good leading indicators of a team player that wants to improve both themselves and the people around them. And so just one final shameless plug, I do have a course that I created for this particular problem. It's called the AWS Learning Accelerator that combines all these different services together to solve a very particular problem. I'll leave a link to it in the description section below if you want to check it out. But yeah, these are the four cloud career mistakes that I wish I avoided in advance. I hope this was helpful for you. And I hope that now that you realize that these are mistakes that I wish I could have fixed, that you'll avoid them from the get go. So thanks so much for watching. And let me know down in the comments if you agree with these mistakes or not. Thanks so much. And I'll see you next time.